Well, well, well. It's been a while since I've made a video, and, um, what I was planning on doing this is a very short video, but I think I need to mention a couple of topics. I need to give you an update on some of my processes, but I wanted to show off some birthday presents that I got. Uh, my birthday was, uh, the end of last year. Um, this is from my sister. It's a Velociraptor shirt from Jurassic World. Nicely large, so it'll fit me now. Now, during the pandemic, I have put on quite a bit of weight. Not exactly my favorite thing in the world. Well, you know, I, I used to walk three miles a day every day, Monday through Friday, going to the bus stop for work. And now during the pandemic, that's been eradicated. Well, now that we're starting to get back into a hybridized work-from-home situation, we're working at the office two days out of the week and then working from home three days of the week, I should be able to get that three miles a day in on Mondays and Tuesdays, but so often nowadays people want to give me a ride to and from work, so that's kind of wiped out. They think they're doing me a favor by getting me to work earlier. It's like, no, you're not. You're affecting my health negatively with that. Uh, and also, my birthday present for my wife, this is a delightful t-shirt that I'm wearing, Central Services, I don't know if you recognize the logo. It's the uh, ubiquitous utility company from the movie Brazil. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a delightfully dark comedy. Make sure to get the, the final cut, not the Love Conquers All version. Um, this is a much, much longer cut. It's a little over two hours, I think. The Love Conquers All version is like an hour and a half. It's really short. Uh, but it's a bad edit. And it's just a happy ending thing. It's really hard for me to imagine a happy ending to a dark comedy. My wife likes it, though, but I'm sorry. No, it's a dark comedy. It's supposed to end with a dark ending. Uh, so, yes, get the final cut, director's cut of Brazil. It's a delightful movie. Actually, really quite funny. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about right now, though, was the movie industry and basically the media and entertainment industry. There's a lot of fuss about uh, collaborations between pop stars and stuff right now, and I wanted to talk about why the music industry and the film industry are the way they are. And I wanted to give you an example, because everybody talks about it as being something that will never be realized because it's never happened before. And I say, yes, it has. Uh, the original Phantasm movie starred A. Michael Baldwin as Mikey. Um, his older brother, Jody, was played by Bill Thornbury. And, of course, Reggie Bannister, the famous ice cream vendor, was played by Reggie Bannister. Funny, they just didn't come up with any fictional names for these characters. They just used the actors' names. Um... But the original movie, this is Mikey from the first movie. And then, nine years later, Don Coscarelli decides to go to Paramount Pictures to get funding for distribution and a massive budget to make the sequel, because they were pressuring him to make a sequel. And so they signed him a contract for distribution rights and uh, a massive budget, but they insisted that he jettison one of his top main character actors for someone from the Screen Actors Guild. And so in the second movie, Mikey looked like this. He looks like a football player, a blonde-haired football player, suddenly. And then, sure enough, my Don Cascarelli decided to go back to being an independent filmmaker for the third film, and then in Phantasm Three, Mikey looked like this. This is Mikey? What the hell is this guy from the second movie? That's what hurt the franchise, was having to use a Screen Actors Guild actor for one of your main characters in the second movie, and nobody knew what the hell he looked like. <laughs> I mean, granted, the second movie is a good movie. It is actually my favorite of the Phantasm series, because it is a more consistently and specifically horror film. Uh, the first movie was an introduction to the concept, which was delightfully disturbing and scary for a lot of people. It didn't need to be a whole lot of a horror film. Just the mere present premise alone was scary enough. Uh, the third movie was a little bit less of a horror film. It was more of a exploration of the concept of the tall man and the flying sears. 
Um, Phantasm 4 was even more not a horror film, and Phantasm 5 was a coda, as you, if you will, just a closure of the sequence of this uh, series. But yes, Phantasm 2 is my favorite version of Phantasm, even though it's got the worst uh, casting. But that's what the film industry does. They don't really have a whole lot of respect for the artist's product or the consistency within a franchise. They just don't care. All they want is their bottom dollar. All they want is to insert themselves into it. And that's what you get. And the music industry is kind of no different. Uh, when it comes to independent uh, musicians trying to bust into the popular music scene, if they aren't greasing the palms of the industry, they're not going to make it because the industry is going to shut them down every chance they get. Which is why you get problems like what we're dealing with these days. That's what the world is like. Sorry, sucks. But of course, you know, the people who are fighting it, they know what they're up against. They've been dealing with it their entire career. So it's not really uh, a surprise or news to them. To the rest of us, we're kind of like looking at it going, like, oh my god, this is horrible. Why can't these guys get any respect? And they're looking at the world going like, nah, we're used to it. Because they dealt with it their entire career. By the way, yes, I am using my, my cheapo little uh, polarizing filter. I'm not sure how well it's working. I have to remember, it doesn't really work guaranteeably for vloggers because I'm dealing with two different light sources. The polarizing filter is supposed to polarize exactly one light source. So, since I have diffuse lights, which again, that kind of makes the light seem to come from hundreds of different, millions of different sources instead of just one. And I've also got two of them. So that compounds the problem. But I still find that it produces a better lighting effect by using it. Um, I also wanted to talk about my effort to make my Clockwork Angels extended playlist this is the actual album itself, uh, as I've arranged it. Um, these are just MP3s on my Kindle. But uh, this is the sequence of the songs on the album. You see it just barely, it's longer than the screen size. Uh, on here I also have, and it's not finished yet, I have a playlist with a couple of songs added to it. But it needs to be a lot more. Uh, on my YouTube channel, I think I'm going to put a description, a link to the playlist in my description here, where it is perfect and finalized on YouTube. But I need to reflect that in my Kindle so that I can properly deliver it. Um, I haven't worked out the kinks in my presentation for it yet, so that's another one that's coming up still. I keep talking about it and still not doing it. Um, I also wanted to show off my progress in Wandroid number four. Here is the map to level seven. And I've got all the notes for it. The level seven I have completed. Now level eight is nowhere near complete. And I don't have the notes for it at all. Uh, level nine, I have an almost complete map of it. But I don't have the notes for it. And level 10, I haven't been able to get a map for yet because I keep getting killed and not being able to save screenshots of the maps. So I haven't got any maps of it yet. Uh, I did print out my script. My video for Wanderwood number 4, when I redo it, is going to be a lot like my original presentation. Uh, I'm going to do one video basically outlining what, I've, what has been added to the series since game 1. And then basically giving a quick overview of uh, how to play the game based on my uh, blog entry for Wanderwood number one, which lays out all the details of how to play the game. You almost might call it more of a user manual. But I'll have links to the new spell books and stuff like that, the new races and classes and stuff uh, in my blog, and I'll have links to those when I do that video. But then I'm going to have a second video, which is going to be called the spoiler-filled video, which uh, shows all the maps 
and shows how to play through the maps and how to get to through the dungeon, how to level up, uh, where the good monsters are, um, all the good stuff of how to get through the game. Basically, a walkthrough for those who might have gotten stuck or just aren't looking to play the puzzles, just want to play the game, or who just want to win and not really enjoy the mystery of it. But, uh, but that way it'll be a separate video. For those of you who do want to approach the mystery and deal with the puzzles and surprises, you don't have to watch that video. You can just watch the first video and play the game without the assistance of the maps. Because you can get your own maps while playing the game. The other reason I need to redo the videos is because the game has been taken off the Google Play Store. I don't know why. It is very unique from games 1, 2, and 3. I don't see why they don't consider it a different and unique game playing experience. But I'm going to have to provide links to websites where you can download it from uh, for your phone. Uh, it, the Wanderwood games do not work on Kindles and tablets, so I just thought I'd get that out of the way first. But yeah, so I printed out my script for the first video. Uh, I'm tweaking it and updating it, and of course, because of the fact that when I made this video, the old one, I couldn't get past level 6, so its notes only go to level 6. But it does have the layout, the details of how to get through the various parts of the dungeon. So all I have to do is just rework this and present it again. Hopefully with better screenshots and better editing, better sound, and better screen quality because my first video was one of my earliest videos and the video quality was horrible. My delivery was horrible. Um, and the, the video was basically the, the game. So my wife cannot deal with white lettering on a black background. So for her, this game is just totally unplayable. Even though she likes the idea of it, she can't play it because she can't really read the lettering in it. Because something about her eyes and the astigmatism that she has causes the letters in black background to kind of warp and do funny things. So she can't actually see it. Um, I want to show off something I got from an exotic store. Ant candy. Um, I've had chocolate covered ants before and I've always liked them. Now don't get all horribly grossed out. The thing I always keep telling people is ants are a good source of fumaric acid. Fumaric acid is a very close relative of the stuff that's used to make Hawaiian punch. The wonderful fruit juice that we all loved as kids. One of the main ingredients of it is I think it's a sodium fumarate which is basically a salt of fumaric acid. So ants taste very citrusy, very fruity. And this, this package here, it says it contains a particular breed of black ants. Uh, I can't quite read it, it's, it's a Latin name. Um, the print's not that good. It's white letters on back background, I don't know, maybe you can see it better than I can. But, uh, <clears throat> I did uh, give a brief description of why fumaric acid is good in my book. Duh, I'm plugging my book again. Um, but yes, I have a very brief description of it at the beginning, I believe, of the uh, Dissing Economics section, where I talk about it briefly there. Um, and yes, in a very comical tone, so you don't have to worry about me trying to take myself seriously about that. But I think this is probably going to be that semi-hard lollipop stuff. Remember Astro Pops? Um, I used to get the Astro Pops a lot. After you would lick them for a while, they would start to get a little bit soft and they would bend. And you could bend them to like, you know, little um, curved shapes. I'm hoping this is like that. But yeah, this is a particular breed of black ants. And it looks like basically just a rock candy. I don't know if it's going to be brittle or not. Um, with my teeth, I probably shouldn't try to bite into it. But uh, I think that's all I need to say today. Am I done yet? I think I'm done. Oh, no, I've got to show off my, my Lemmy Kilmeister Funko uh, Pop Rocks thing again. Um, sorry to say, Meatloaf passed away, and I'm very sorry about that. I always was a big fan of his, and um, I made a comment in here also um, when I was talking about Ian Gilling doing charity work in the late 80s. I quoted um, a bit from Meatloaf talking about one time he had found out that uh, some high school was using 
the video from his song Paradise by the Dashboard Light. And he was really surprised. He said, oh my God, I've done something useful for society. And he was really shocked and surprised. And, you know, you look at the video and you're like, why would you be surprised? That was a very cut and dry, that's what life is like for teenagers type song. Why wouldn't that be helpful and beneficial? So, yeah, I was a big fan of Meatloaf. Um, but, yeah, uh, we also lost Betty White. Very, very tragic that she died just before her birthday. I really wish she could have stuck around. But I will always think of her in the present tense. She is the queen of TV. No questions asked. No qualifications. Just she is. And she always will be. <coughs> and we also lost Bob Saget. Another tragic loss. Very surprising. I don't know if he had COVID. I know, I know Meatloaf passed away from COVID. But I don't know what Bob Saget passed away from. But yeah, Betty White's passing was a very big surprise, even to her assistant. I follow her on Facebook now, and her assistant said these are pictures that were taken like the day before she died. They were at home, and she was fully dressed and acting normal and everything. Poof, all of a sudden I say she's dead. Horrible. Tragic. I hope she at least didn't suffer any. But yes, I wanted to uh, show off my birthday presents. And Central Services, tell me about your ducks. Do they look old and outdated? <laughs> yes, I'm having too much fun with that. <laughs>